The 2023 Baltimore Orioles were one of the biggest surprises in baseball, exceeding their expectations by a lot. ESPN had them projected to win 74 games considering their team was still really young and really raw. They won 101. The youth significantly improved. Their best player was their third baseman slash shortstop, Gunnar Henderson. He basically split his time evenly between the two positions last year. And Gunnar Henderson is really good. He hits home runs, he plays great defense, he runs fast, and there's no base runner in the entire sport who provides more value than him. In total, he was deemed the fifth best player in the American League last season by the famous wins above replacement stat. But like, almost nobody noticed. And a lot of those people who noticed don't really care. It's really unusual for the best player on a 101-win team full of ever-growing talent to be an extremely talented 22-year-old slugger with other plus tools, and yet he's being left in the dust. So how good was Henderson's first season in the league? To quote a Ben Shapiro rap lyric, let's look at the stats. Gunnar Henderson led all rookies this year with 28 home runs, and all American League rookies with 82 runs batted in. Only 15 AL players had more home runs this year than Gunnar, all of whom have a lot more big league at-bats to their name than he does. He was top 5% in all of baseball in hard hit rate, hitting the ball over 95 miles an hour off the bat more than 52% of the time. And it's not just his bat. His defensive war was 7th in all of the AL, which for someone who more or less split their time evenly between shortstop and third base is even more impressive. Positional feel is an under-discussed way to put players in the best position to be successful in baseball, and Gunner was still able to be a defensive stud without staying in a rhythm at any one position. What helps him is that his arm is a cannon, in the 84th percentile in all of baseball for arm strength in fact. He's also very fast too don't forget that. With 85th percentile sprint speed, you may not have known he's as fast as he is because he only stole 10 bases, but it comes out in much more subtle ways. He was tied for third in all of MLB in triples with 9 last season. His rate of taking the extra base on the base pass was 61%, which was top 10 in the league. His rate of eventually scoring while he was on base was 41%, tied for the second highest in MLB, which led to him being just one of 17 players to score 100 runs this year. In case you forgot, Scoring runs is how you win in baseball, so being someone who scores a lot of runs can be pretty important. And there's usually a correlation between the top run scorers and the best players. It's weirdly not a team-dependent stat in the way certain overambitious contrarians might try to say on Twitter. As the far and away most valuable player on the Orioles this year, he finished 8th in AL MVP voting, and obviously, first in Rookie of the Year voting. Baltimore won 100 games for the first time since 1980, the year the Empire Strikes Back came out. In between Orioles' 100 win seasons, 10 other Star Wars movies came out in theaters, including this one. So I have a comp on Gunnar Henderson for you. Luke Skywalker, young blonde guy who could really swing the stick, save in a ragtag group of young people from the evil Empire that was reigning supreme. Bet you didn't see that coming, huh? Gunnar Henderson saved the AL East, until the Texas Rangers came to town and swept them in the ALDS. Gunnar played well, going 6 for 12 in the three playoff games with a home run, but the Orioles failed to progress further into the national spotlight. The world didn't get to see Gunnar's many talents because the Rangers just dominated them in their series, on their way to a world championship. You know who they did see though? The other rookie of the year, and one of the only guys in baseball faster than him? Corbin Carroll. Die-hard baseball fans knew Corbin Carroll was good, but the whole world got to see it as the Arizona Diamondbacks made a push into the World Series. It's the fastest we've seen a really young player rise up through the ranks and earn widespread acclaim since Juan Soto, and he's been pretty good since then, I would say. Gunner and the Orioles didn't win a playoff game. His NL counterpart led an improbable run to the World Series. That prevented the world from seeing Gunner and giving him his dues on a phenomenal rookie season. And it's a piece of why he's been buried in the shuffle of other young talent of late. In reality, Gunner is one of, if not the, most promising young players in baseball. But in terms of how much attention he gets for it, it's very low in the grand scheme of the rest of his competition. So, 
it's time to bust out a new statistic for these videos. A quantifiable measurement never before used in SRS content as a means of making a point. It's time to talk about Instagram followers. No, like actually. I'm going somewhere with this, for real. Please bear with me. At the time of recording this, Gunnar Henderson has just under 75,000 followers on Instagram. Pretty solid, way more than me. Corbin Carroll has nearly double that. Now, if you're gonna say World Series exposure helped with that, you're probably right. So now let's talk about some other young talent around him. Ellie De La Cruz came up this year for the Cincinnati Reds with a firestorm of hype surrounding him. He plays the same position as Gunner, with a noticeably weaker output on the season. His team didn't make the playoffs. He was 7th in his own league in Rookie of the Year voting. If you merged him with Jose Ramirez, his total war on the season would still be below Gunner's. And the only stat on the back of a baseball card Ellie beats Gunner in is stolen bases. And, uh, Ellie's basking in way more fame and attention on social media right now. Francisco Alvarez is the same age as Gunner. His reputation is that he hits a lot of home runs for a young player and has positive defensive upside for his position. Still behind Gunner and all of those things, but ahead in clout. Jackson Holiday is currently still in the minor leagues for the Orioles. He's got the buzz of being the Orioles shortstop of the future, while Gunner is still on the team coming off a sensational rookie season, mind you. At 22 years old, all of the baseball eyes are on Holiday and his family though, even on the MLB YouTube channel recently. And bam, he's also already accumulated way more social media clout. Now, I am in no way saying that Instagram followers are everything, or all that important even in the grand scheme of life. If you live your life as a slave to Instagram follower counts, you should probably rethink how you live your life. But in this case, I'm using it as part of a different problem. The lack of recognition and attention for Gunnar Henderson problem. And because we just showed a clip of Gunnar Henderson doing great things in Oakland, I'm gonna take this opportunity to tell you something. We are raising money for Oakland-based nonprofits by selling these shirts. Not fair that they have to lose their team, so we're out to try to make the city a little bit better than we found it. StarkRavingSports.com, link in the description. Back to Gunnar Henderson. Henderson has achieved more than almost all of those guys. Corbin Carroll's the only one who has climbed a little bit higher on a baseball field. But you noticed those guys, and talked about them. The world hasn't gotten around to recognizing the young star that already snuck a genuinely really good big league skill set and season under his belt already, and he's mostly done it under everyone's noses. I do also want to say that there was only one player rated as a higher prospect than all of those guys coming into last season. Only one person was given a higher prospect pedigree on MLB.com than Carroll, Ellie, Alvarez, or Holiday. Oh yeah, it was Gunnar Henderson, the top prospect in all of baseball. The top prospect in baseball put forth an outstanding season to start his career and propel his team to the best record in the American League. And we're just not talking about that. And top prospects on MLB.com have all been really good. Their track record is excellent. Other top prospects in this era have included Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Shohei Otani, Corey Seager, and Mike Trout. So like, the ability of scouts to peg who's going to be really good has sharpened to the best it's ever been. They're giving him the same honor they've given these incredibly successful players who have proven their worth. Gunnar Henderson has become the first one to burst onto the scene completely under everyone's radar, and I find that incredibly weird. Because normally, all everyone wants to get attached to are successful young players. Hype is a very valuable thing though to get people excited, which is why we're going to circle back to Ellie De La Cruz. Ellie surpassed Gunner in hype off the back of an insane first stretch of his career. His first 30 games in the big leagues, he hit 325 while hitting rockets, running insanely fast, and once stealing every base in a two-pitch span. De La Cruz is coming home! The girl! Lost sight of him! You probably didn't even know that was possible, but Ellie De La Cruz did it. That's the image everyone has of him, even if the final numbers actually aren't too pretty. Gunnar Henderson's first few games, not nearly as good. Through the first month and a half of the season this year, 
he wasn't playing well at all. So the eyes that remained from the Prospect followers and non-Orioles fans slowly started to drift, whereas the more toolsy and electric young talent were taking all the attention. And, admittedly, I fell victim to this too. Everywhere in the world shows your highlights if you have these raw tools. Because tools generally make for highlights. Meanwhile, Gunner's highlight to note from the first 60 or so games of his career was his helmet falling off his head during his first big league home run. And that was in his very first big league game, because of course it was. It is not a good sign though to have a Bartolo Colon-like helmet moment as an everyday player, but the difference between Gunner and most of the other highlight-rich players of his age are that Gunner has produced much more tangible success on the field, and that hasn't gotten the same love. By comparison, he produced much more in silence, because his well-rounded skill set didn't have the extremes. Like I said before, the extreme tools get you highlights. He didn't have the speed of Ellie or Carroll, he didn't have the same flash to his power the way Alvarez did. He was good at nearly every tool you can have, but unreal at none of them. But what that doesn't factor in is how much time there is to go. To uninformed casuals, that kind of made him one of those jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none types. But honestly, I still think you have to give him his props for having a pretty diverse skill set. He's got plenty of time to get even better and fulfill even more of his potential. He's already proven he's great and has had an outstanding opening to his career. So I'll give you a few more names to compare him to to show you what it could look like when someone this good gets even more time to grow. Comparisons that are real people this time, not Luke Skywalker. In terms of his tools, this is where 22-year-old Gunnar Henderson fell in his rookie season, as a breath of fresh air infielder for a young team exceeding any and all expectations to go back to the playoffs for the first time in a while. That same exact description applies to 20-year-old Carlos Correa, whose tools output as a rookie looked pretty similar. And in terms of the hitters with the most similar on-field production through age 22, three of them are in the Hall of Fame. The future could be extremely bright for Gunnar Henderson. All we can do is wait to see where he and the Orioles go from here. Oh, also, if you throw Baltimore Orioles meme into a Google Images search, you get some insane results here. So enjoy that, fellas.